Hi guys, it is uh, coming up to 20 past 4, Tuesday the 17th of uh, January. It's vlog number 13. Um, the reason I wanted to do this vlog really was to tell you how prepping for competition has completely changed my perspective and impression of physique competitors. When I was fat years ago, uh, in fact before I even emigrated to Australia, I flicked on a TV show, I think it was... Uh, I can't remember which show it would have been, but it would be some sort of uh, fitness modelling contest somewhere in London, I think. And um, I dismissed it. I dismissed the athletes as all being incredibly genetically gifted, beautiful people with too much time on their hands, who ate dust and drank water, um, who spent too much time at the gym, were incredibly vain and got on stage and had a great time, won a trophy and buggered off home and did it all again the following year. That was genuinely my impression. Having then gone through my own epiphany and realised that it was something I wanted to do, I have come to the conclusion that obviously that perception, which seems to be held by quite a lot of people judging by the very negative comments I keep receiving now, um, fitness models and physique competitors are some of the hardest working athletes I have ever come across. Now I've been around professional sports people um, and professional sportsmen in this country and overseas. And yes, they work hard, but um, they're often their full-time focus is their sporting career and the pursuit of sporting success. Except for a very few genetically gifted people, less than 1%, and except for those who are lucky enough to um, either be independently wealthy or be sponsored, 99.99% .99 of physique competitors balance incredibly demanding non-fitness related jobs, um, incredibly difficult and demanding family lives, um, the whole range of normal problems that normal everyday people go through, job insecurities, money worries, schooling concerns, whether their exams are going to give them or yield them the careers that they want. Um, actually every single person I've met is inherently normal. The one thing that differentiates them from everybody else is that actually they are prepared to sacrifice um, a lot in order to pursue their dreams. And their dreams include becoming the best possible versions of themselves. And I wanted to discuss what I meant by that. Yes, you get judged on your aesthetic and your physique when you put yourself on stage in a pair of speedos. But actually, to get to that stage in those speedos, you have to overcome a huge number of emotional and psychological battles as well. You have to somehow develop pretty thick skin. You have to find self-confidence and a self-belief that very few people I've met in ordinary non-fitness related lives actually possess. You have to find a grit and determination to keep pushing through in terms of training and diet and sleep, even when your real life gets in the way. And that demands respect. It doesn't deserve criticism. Now, I've put my head above the parapet and I've very publicly shared my um, incredibly dramatic roller coaster of a journey as I prep the stage. But I've done that on purpose. The first thing is it's great therapy. Um, I think expressing emotions, um, positive and negative ones, is an incredibly powerful thing. And I think, judging by the comments I've got, I know I'm not alone. I may just be more vocal at, at expressing it or more prepared to vocalise it. Um, but the negativity that surrounds what I've been doing is incredible. Um, including people that were originally helping me to get to stage, they, they've obviously been put off by the fact that I'm prepared to share my experience with people. I'm not doing it to gain popularity, and I'm not even doing it to become some kind of YouTube pseudo-celebrity. That's not in my interest at all. In fact, YouTube couldn't even pay me enough, even if I got a million likes. Um, I'd have to give up my day job, which is something I don't want to do. But I'm doing it to show that all those people who sit behind their computer screens or on their smartphones, um, telling people like me that we are vain, self-centered, obsessive, compulsive, selfish, that we promote unhealthy lifestyles and bad eating habits and training regimes that are flawed, 
Well, you're wrong. Get a grip. And to be quite frank, if you don't want to follow us and find out what we're doing, switch off, switch over, bugger off, go outside and play with some traffic, preferably on the M5. Because it's about time you stopped being nasty and promoting a message of hate. It's not on. It's not reflective of the reality of what we have to go through to get ourselves to stage. Um, so just do one. Yes, we've chosen um, to um, do something that's incredibly hard. But it's like in business, really. There are, there are three types of people in business. There are those that just turn up, do their stuff and go home. There are those that seek out and innovate and create new op opportunities and they become the leaders in business. And then there are those that find excuses to, never, to not do anything at all. Well, the same is true in, in fitness, really, I suppose. If you want to go out and make change and try and create positive influence, then you just have to put yourself through that, that kind of process. And that's what I'm doing, really. I never set out to inspire or motivate anybody, but it's become apparent that um, what I thought was just a normal lad doing a normal thing has turned into a, um, a pretty powerful message to people, actually, that if you want something, you have to work for it. Um, if you're prepared to work hard for it, then um, you might just get it. Um, I suppose really, the one thing that I've realised, the one, one of many positive things that will come out from me competing, the first thing is um, I will have um, incredible health and fitness that I've never had before. I mean, when I was 32 and obese, um, I was told I'd, I'm likely to live through my 40s because of my lifestyle. That's a pretty bad thing to, to find out um, when you're in your 30s. And then when I injured my spine and one of the prognoses was I may never be able to run or walk or lift again properly or unaided, that puts things into perspective too. Um, and it makes you realise that, yes, you can sit back and let life pass you by or you can do something positive and pursue your dream. Um, my dream is to get on stage, um, is to look my best, uh, it's, to make, it's to make myself proud of my achievements and whilst I sit here today and I'm already proud of where I've come it's um it's not the end result and that will be true for nearly every single person who competes um, they're all wanting to um, become better versions of, of, of themselves and to keep improving and to keep taking on new challenges um, so to all of those athletes I salute you and you have my utmost respect to those who seek to criticise and offer opinions, I'll give you an example. I mean, I, I know my chest is, um, I've been focusing on it quite a lot over the last few days, but I know my chest is not my greatest asset. But believe you me, it will be. Uh, perhaps not uh, for this competition or perhaps not for the competitions later in the year, but um, soon, very soon, and for the rest of my life. I, I can't remember what quote that's from, but it seemed appropriate. Um, but it spurs you on. But, you know, quite frankly, unless you guys know how difficult it is to go from having a flat chest um, to having some chest to having an extraordinary chest, I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen within a few months. I've only been training. I have to keep reminding myself. I've only been weight training for um, 14 or 15 months. And the progress that I've made in that period is phenomenal. And yes, I'm going to be competing against people that have been doing it for years. But hey ho. I'm a late starter, better late than never. Um, and that's it really. Um, the biggest battle for me is going to be to learn um, to extract the positives from even the deepest, darkest emotional pits that I managed to fall in between um, now and the first. But the ver the ba making a better version of myself is not just a physical one, it's an emotional and it's a psychological one. I will um, get to the end of competition um, on the 1st of April when I return back to the house I'm renting in Margate and I will um, be content that emotionally I'm in a better place I'm an emotionally and psychologically strong person anyway but I'll be even stronger my self-confidence and self-belief will have returned to an all-time high irrespective of the results of competition this isn't contingent on winning or placing this is actually just contingent on turning up and getting through the day I'll have learned to deal with really harsh personal criticism, not criticism you get at work about the quality of your work or um, whether you're doing something wrong, but really um, 
harsh personal criticism and in some cases insults I'll have learned to deal with that better I'll have learned to um, um, not fly off the handle as much um, and I'm better than I was certainly 12 months ago but I'm an Aries I'm incredibly hot-headed uh, hot-headed my personality type is incredibly dominant um, I want things done and I want them done now so um, I think I'm I'm becoming a much better person as part of this process the journey to get there is a pain in the arse if I'm honest but um, it's certainly going to be worth it um, so thank you for coming on the journey with me um, thank you for being part of the soap opera that is very much my life and um, one bit of positive news is the 70 day countdown starts on Saturday 70 days can't believe it 10 weeks to go going to be awesome so thanks guys thanks for listening have an incredible tuesday enjoy the rest of the week and i will see you all soon bye bye